Mario, are dark. you riding Michael? <laughs> <laughs> or Grandpa? Was it one? like pass it on a double? <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm not. I'm not riding Mike. I'm not riding his Grandpa. Um, <laughs> that's disrespect. <laughs> Good evening, Degenerates, and welcome back to another episode of Degen Hours. We are here, Sweet 16 woo, time, woo, baby. Woo, March six. Madness, it is Sweet. as electric as you can get. Sweet like a treat! Boy. And one of our teams yeah. is still in the Sweet 16. Gun we there. have a new flag up there, new if flag you can alert. notice. New flag alert! Texas down goes down. Texas! Down, down goes Texas! Down goes that shitty flag! It was so disgusting, it was changing the mood in here. we talking about all the here. teams that never made it up on we this? Disgusting orange. We couldn't keep that disgusting burnt orange. Wait, Mike, let's... The Clutch and Tigers in Sweet 16, we're back up. Let's, we're on the wall. Let's talk about the teams that never made it on the wall. What were you What were you saying about that? No, 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 no. We're not going to talk about Texas right now because this is a winner's show. But before we talk about the Sweet 16, recap a little last week how our DGEN bracket is doing. And then we're going to give you all the picks for all the games this week. Without further ado, Sweet Pick 16 em. action. Let's get it. There were quite a bit of upsets in the first round. Oh, yeah. Not as many as in the second round. I mean, no. if you look at the Sweet 16, yeah, it's no. really pretty no. chalk. It was literally all year. favorite. Yeah, yeah it's like, Clemson. for the most part, yeah, in Clemson. NC State. That was the only. But there was a couple big upsets <laughs> I want to talk about, and then we could go into how our bracket's doing uh, not well. But <laughs> biggest upset was by far Oakland over Kentucky. The 14 oh, yeah. seed. Over the three seed. I mean, Jack shout out Kentucky. Jack Golke is Jack Golke is the yeah, goat. Yeah. That was awesome. I mean, the actual goat. They were eliminated in the next round, you know. <laughs> but, but barely. But barely. But barely. barely. And uh, they went to overtime, right? Yeah. It was an overtime game. Yeah. But I mean, Jack Golke, he became a superstar overnight. The guy made 10 three pointers against Kentucky. But the big <laughs> story here is Kentucky continuing to just lose every year. Yeah, they suck. I mean, Kyle Pari has completely get him out he doesn't care about the tournament at all no. he even said like their goal isn't to win the tournament it's to like put guys in the nba but kentucky like that that's supposed to be a winning program yeah, yeah. Like, it, you would never hear coach k or like roy williams or someone say something like no that. Well, like, that's John also like that's, that's also the stupidest thing to say because players who are going to go to the nba aren't going to go to kentucky anymore if they just continue to lose well, I mean, right, so it's like, yeah, I mean, college hand basketball hand. and NIL is like, uh, we, yeah, that's it's a thing crazy, in its own. Yeah. But Kentucky for a while has been just like an NBA factory. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if winners are going to want to go there. I mean, Code Calipari's, I mean, he's a lifetime contract making $9 million a year. Yeah. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. worth it for him. But I don't know about that. That's rough. What'd you guys think about Oakland? That was pretty electric. That uh, hurt. It really hurt. My mortal was the over, so it really hurt. You were a big Kentucky and guy. Didn't, didn't they miss by like three points? It, it only well, missed by three. Yeah. If Kentucky just. Did what they were supposed to do. I mean, any. I didn't think a nobody Oakland team, a guy would make 10 threes in his Oakland first career team. game of his life, like playing well. Like he averages 11 points a game. And Superstar. He whatever. I mean, Spolster's penciled yeah. that guy. I mean, he's going like to at least yeah. 12 minutes. He's literally yeah. gonna, he's going to play in <laughs> the NBA Robinson G League. <laughs> it's still there for about a week, and then he'll have a desk job somewhere. Like the guy's going to be future account. And, and that dude though. just took down. Five stars going to the NBA. Oh, yeah. They oh, just happens, lost, they lost to their year. future accountant. Yeah. Happens, <laughs> happens every year. But, he got yeah. his NIL bag. Do you see all, like, the, he had, like, TurboTax and, like, Buffalo Wild Wings or something. Oh, oh, yeah, I yeah. love the TurboTax. He filmed it in the hallway. Yeah. That's, that was so funny. Good for him. But, yeah, a couple other upsets to mention. Uh, Yale over Auburn. Oh, that's I didn't see I didn't see I didn't see that coming. Well, everyone yeah. said Auburn the whole year, only, like, they weren't a good team. Their record said otherwise because they played <clears> nobody. It's just a kind of a light. When you're in that light, just like you just get beat. Yeah, but Yale. Yeah, I mean the SEC. Well, Yale has a tendency to do this though. But I was dude, looking those... back because when I was making my bracket and uh, one of my brackets, not the one that we have personally, but yeah, the other one, I, I had Yale winning that game just because I went back and like, dude, the Ivy League schools dude, the past Princeton five years, years ago. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Yale did it a few years back too. Like they low key kind of get out the first round. So yeah, I mean, well, the SEC. It's just been terrible. Yeah. It's ever Bama. I mean, yeah, you have Bama yeah. and you have Tennessee that Shout are still hanging Williams around. But, those, had Bama. but they both, like, you know, they didn't really get put up against the most insane competition. Yeah, definitely not. Whether or not, you know, Alabama maybe, but Tennessee's yeah. just kind of been walking around these games. A um, couple more. JMU over Wisconsin. 12 that over was, the five. Yeah, that was pretty That, that was, was a tough that one. That was a good one. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was weird. The one we called Duquesne over BYU. Duquesne! Shout out Duquesne! We Mom called mortal. that. Saw it all the way. Electric, Mom yeah, mortal. that was your mortal. Great mortal. Bang. What the a mortal, mortal parlay was looking great in the beginning. Started yeah. 3-0, yeah. and and then just absolutely collapsed yeah. at the same time with Ryan's Oosh. over and my uh, 
McNeese. Yeah. McNeese. They were not McNeese. McNeese. McNeese is not McNeese. No, yeah, that was the worst McNeese. pick I've ever seen. I had them in the Elite Eight in my bracket. Oh, <laughs> that was, that's yeah. McDonald's work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not good. it looked like they were just like, the superstars from like a LA fitness put together <laughs> like no, at no point a, at no were, point did I ever think they actually knew like how to play other. basketball <laughs> no. like they were just running around they I mean I get like they had some heart you could those little boys I don't know they, they were, were scrapping around they were trying to get into it they were trying to get stuck in but they that was a pain they painful didn't run game. one offensive play they didn't run one defensive coverage <laughs> no, it was second, just like run around and <laughs> move the second play. the tip yeah. off get, went off get I was like put in basket. yeah the second the tip off happened I was like oh this is dead yeah, like, yeah, just, there's just no way I just looked at the size of these guys I was like yeah, they why did I out, mortal this? Like, why, it made no sense. And none of them could shoot. No, and then the last <laughs> one, which I mean, a lot of people did predict, was NC State over Texas Tech. NC State, Wolf also back, baby. the biggest uh, like Cinderella, quote unquote, yeah, left in the they are, tournament. They are riding that high. Uh, yeah, I, I was gonna say we can talk about it in a second after we talk about go over the bracket. But I mean, I don't know how much of a Cinderella NC State really is. Yeah. I mean, the seating is kind of crazy, got very but fortunate. yeah, just mm -hmm. quickly our bracket. Um, we're in the 32, <laughs> 32nd percentile. That's nice. Miserable. What's that's, our rank? That's not nice. Like 18 that, million. Yeah, we're like, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty cool. As bad as it gets. Yeah. I mean, yeah. This, this we're not terrible. sharp. We're not dead though. At least we have our. We do. Champions. We have our champion. We have Tennessee could, to win. It could be like yeah. me and have your champion out in the first round. <laughs> yeah, it's. Not, yeah. <laughs> wow. It was pretty painful. These, this, these bracket picks were not good. But I mean, <clears throat> like we said. Um, the only Cinderella teams remaining were Clemson as a sixth seed, uh, who just upset Baylor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go Tigers. And then NC State, the 11, who's probably the hottest team Ooh. in basketball still. Gotta I mean, be, yeah. you got to – I feel like they're going to be underdogs every game. Yeah. yeah. But you kind of have to ride them until they prove you otherwise because, like ah. – I mean, you can pick the other way, but I'm just saying, this team, mm -hmm. that fat guy they have in the middle. Burns. Unbelievable. Big fat fatty. Yeah. Unbelievable. He's, a dog. He's so good. Big I fat fatso, man. Yeah, I mean, the conference breakdowns for how many teams each conference has in the Sweet 16 are kind of interesting. I don't know if anyone has thoughts on this, but ACC is four, Big East three, Big Ten Big two, East. Big 12 two, SEC two, then Mountain West, Pac-12, and the West Coast Conference with one apiece. So, like, I feel like, especially if you look at the rankings, that's not how people thought it was going to go. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, the SEC, everyone said... Everyone thought the SEC was just going to clean up this tournament. Yeah. And they definitely, I mean, they still have, you know, two yeah, teams in, but we'll see. it's pretty interesting there. Shout out Mountain West. I mean, having North Carolina and Duke. You, you big, like Mountain West? Big Mountain West guy? Western Mountain. What, what's the team in the Mountain West? Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, but cool. cool yeah. Division. If you had to guess, Tennessee? Who is it, Mike? Oh, wait, hold on. I can, let I can, let, let, let's give us a second. Let's give us a second. Oh, oh, I know exactly who it is. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's easy. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, Creighton. No. Shit. Oh, oh, uh, no, it's Marquette. No, no, they're both in the same division. Yeah, uh, uh, SCSU. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Mountain West? It's SCSU. It's SCSU. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. And Arizona's Pac-12. Suck it. Oh! <laughs> After three there guesses. he goes. There yeah. he is. And that's why you Mike tuned into the show. He knew it. Mike I knows it. everything. Yeah. You give me three strikes, I got it in three. All right. Well, you know, let's. You I feel three. like your picture. You get three. I feel like his picture me sharp this week, given he knows the conferences, yeah, he knows he the does. teams, he's been researching. You lab. can't give Mike three strikes. No, I, you can't give Mike three strikes. Baseball, basketball, anything. No, yeah. dudes, dudes. He's ready to roll. He's ready to roll. <laughs> <ready to> roll. <laughs> and like speaking of ready to roll, uh, we got eight games to talk about. Let's go ahead and start with the Roly Thursday ones. Poly. Sweet 16 time. Let's get it. Bang. First Sweet 16 game Woo! is my favorite game. <laughs> yeah. Bang. Clemson, Arizona. I cannot believe we made it this far. Go time. I'm so excited. Okay. Arizona's favored by seven and a half. Totals okay. 151.5. The game is local. It's in LA. I'm 100% going to be there. Yeah, because Expect oh my god, content. this is the first time we've been to Sweet Sixteen. That's the way. Like I said in our last episode, since my freshman year of college, I'm so excited. Go Tigers, Clap Brad Brunell. I don't want you to get fired. And Quick, Chase Hunter. Yeah, I want to. I want to just update what I said when I was talking about pre-tournament, how what our team needed to win. Flashback. All right, now let me tell you something about this game, Brad Brunell. I know you're watching. He's coach of the Clemson Tigers. For anyone who doesn't know, you are the worst coach of all time. Agreed. Uh, you've been miserable in every playoff game you could ever do. We lost in our first game of the ACC tournament. We every year have so much potential, and you just throw it down the drain. 
if you would have told me our best player would have the worst two games of his life and intentionally try to throw the last game and we would still be in the Sweet 16, I wouldn't have believed you. No shot. I was like, PJ Hall it has to be our big guys. Our guard plays terrible. Our coaching's <clears throat> bad. It's the opposite. Yeah. PJ Hall, the worst. I've never seen someone play so bad in my life. My little brother who doesn't watch basketball texted me, this Hall guy is throwing the game for you. <laughs> and he, he doesn't watch basketball. Shout out, Carter. PJ Hall, I don't know. He's got to figure his shit out if we want to have any chance this game. But shout out Brad Brunell. Shout out Chase Hunter, the two people I shit on all year. The best coach games and best point guard play I've seen from our team by far. Yeah. Like It's unbelievable what they've done. Um, I think we have a real shot here. So my analysis is not going to be too in-depth. But it's very similar to what I, why I picked Clemson in the last game. Baylor was one of the best offensive teams in all of college basketball. When the, I think they were the fifth highest offensive efficiency. And they didn't play a whole lot of defense, but they just ran and scored. Clemson has been really, really good. Those are the same type of team we played in the first two rounds with New Mexico and Baylor. Very similar to Arizona. Arizona's probably better than both of them at, the, at doing what they do. But Arizona doesn't play a lot of defense. They score. They run the ball. Clemson's shown great um, ability to make teams kind of flustered, shoot really poorly, like underperform, and then just like grind them down, run their offensive sets, and do well. So this is like the perfect setup. And then if we win this game, the next game we'll play the winner of the UNC Alabama game, both who we played this year and both who we beat this year. So I'm really looking. I don't think like obviously we're not the favorites, or it's not like people don't think we should make it to the Final Four. But as far as matchups go, and I said this right away. Our side of the bracket was perfect for us. Mm -hmm. It's literally laid out perfectly. If we're ever going to make it, this is the route we'd have to go to make it. So I love Clemson plus seven and a half here. I love the outright. Um, I think if PJ Hall can get playing well and our guard play stays the same, I don't. We're going to have a tough time losing to Arizona because I don't think they're that good. I, we've said all yeah. season like that's the two seed we weren't super comfortable with. So yeah, Clemson, Clemson, go Tigers. Yeah, this is uh, like we've been saying the worst I think bracket portion of the entire NCAA yeah. tournament. And uh, I think that's very beneficial to both these teams. I don't think we've seen the best version of either of these teams yet, to totally. be honest. And it's going to be tough. I don't th if Arizona. I don't think when we say Arizona's bad or hasn't been as good as people think all year, it's not because they're actually bad. It's if they play to their capability. Yes, they're one of the best teams in the country. Yeah, like they shoot out the world. They're unbelievable on offense. They're a bunch of stars too. I d yeah. I just I don't see how. I, I, I just really don't see how Clemson keeps this, like, weird balance going. Like, it hasn't mm -hmm. been continual through all the players playing well. Like, maybe Shefflin played a bad game, or, like, P.J. Hall played a bad game, or Chase Hunter somehow went nuts. Gerard plays well. But yeah, both games, Chase Hunter is straight carried. Yeah. Like, 100% of the game. He scored like, 20 points in both games. So never done that. We'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. see. I mean, I'm because the side of the bracket I hate so much, I'm going to bet Clemson plus a 7.5 because I just don't think either team's good enough to blow either one out. If Arizona scores 120 out, I just don't see Clemson being able to score that much. Totally. But I'm just going to – I think Arizona wins, but Clemson should keep it close. Once again, if you want to bet smart, with three minutes left in the half, see how many fouls P.J. Hall has, and then pick your side. It's worked back-to-back well, back times. Yeah. But, yeah, he's had – so it's kind of weird. The amount – they haven't been playing him. He's played less than 20 minutes both games. Wow. As yeah. our best player. Wow. I love that. Just that even bet it even more. Just game. literally just Yeah, he fouled out last game. And not only did he foul out, he was actively throwing the game when he was in there. Like he was like turning it over <laughs> off. Of, it was it was a travesty when he, what he was That's doing. Wild. It was really right. crazy. And then just bet the over in this game. There's no way the game doesn't go over. Either way, whoever wins. Oh, over. I kinda like the over there too. It's gonna be like at worst it'll be like seventy nine to like seventy seven or some close game like that. But Tate. Um I don't know. If it's, I feel like initially looking at this, like the hotter team is Clemson. Then yeah, if PJ Hall kind of plays up to his standard, he's actually going to give Hunter like some support, and they could like make a run at Arizona. But it's just I can't help but think that Arizona is just too big, and they are they they could quite literally be a big team. one of the That'd best be crazy one. offensive scoring teams in the whole country. Ball over, yeah, Ball's going to be crazy. So you know like. Like Omar Ballo, like when if they need, if they need him in a game because Baylor's a big team, like yeah, they're the, they're a big team, so you know just I, I feel like Clemson doesn't really quite have the size. I actually just don't, I don't see a way Clemson wins this game. They could keep it within the number, and I that it's just this that's why this is such a tough spot. I think for sure, but I, I mean I kind of just want to say like this is kind of just where the run ends for Clemson. I mean we have not seen it from PJ Hall, and we've seen in the tournament. That like players that are hot, they stay hot and they carry their teams through the tournament. Mm -hmm. And if he's not hot now, 
I, he's not going to just spark I don't know if up. He's, yeah, if, yeah. If he doesn't get it done the next game, Arizona will just run over them. Yeah. The point. No, I agree with that. Um, Maybe a little bit redundant to kind of what Ty said, but I actually have a pretty opposite thinking of you, Tate. I think Clemson has a real genuine shot of taking him down. Um, First thing, which Ty already said, is we've kind of said uh, last week and kind of throughout the tournament continuous, we thought Arizona was not a fraudulent two seed, but like the worst of the of the two seeds. Yeah. Right. And so that's number one. Number two, Arizona in their first game against Long Beach, which I mean, shout out Kevin. Shout out Kevin. Shout out Kevin. Not the greatest Go basketball Beach. program. I mean, any of us have ever seen. Shout and out Ryan Gilmore. They kept it. Long Shout, Beach. Out, Ryan Shout out Ryan Beach Gilmore, Long also friend of the pod. Yeah. Sharp. Um, but they kept it very, very close, and it was just first half. easy. First, first half. Well, first, the, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. In the first half, and it was easy slip ups that kind of let uh, Arizona just absolutely break away. And then I think even going into halftime, they were only up by like eight or ten points, something like Less that. Less than that, it was like six. Three. And they could have, yeah. but they could have, yeah, they could have been up when I know you said Long Beach State money line for the first half. That was like a sharp, almost, that, almost that was so pretty sharp. close to being unbelievably sharp. <laughs> but similar to what Ty said is, I think Clemson does have a really good ability to kind of frazzle teams and get them off their normal kind of string of momentum and the way that they like kind of want to play ball. I think it's going to be tough, but if Clemson can kind of hold this game to Clemson style basketball all the way through both halves, then I mean, yeah, I think it's an unbelievable uh good good side to take. Also, quick note. You riding with us? Clemson money line, 30% of bets, 87% of the money. Hell yeah, I'm riding with you. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Go Let's Tigers. Go, wow. go Tigers. Money. That does not work well this tournament. I love it. No, no, no. I love it. <laughs> I'm a ride. Yeah, the public is on fire. Fire. Yeah, public's on fire. Yeah. Especially uh Round of thirty-two. Well, I mean, yeah, and the favorites. To be fair, there's the <laughs> Tuesday. Went fifteen and one. Yeah, on the money lines. No, was, I mean, we'll except for Tuesday. except for one. Who was the one upset? Go Tigers. <clears throat> Go Tigers. <laughs> um, yeah, this is uh, this is a tough spot because I really want to ride with Clemson. Um, I just feel like Clemson, they're kind of playing a little bit past their like ability as a team because PJ Hall just looks frazzled. Like it seems like, like you said, Chase Hunter. It's been terrible all season. He's dropped back-to-back games, 20 points. Like, he's had to, like, step up Best in a huge way. Played, yeah. And that's tough, especially, like, as the te- as the tournament progresses, the teams get harder and harder. Um, whereas Arizona hasn't really found their groove yet. They kind of, like, you'll see them. I mean, they're a streaky team in general, which is kind of why, like, the consensus with us was, like, they're not necessarily the strongest two seed but we know like when they do get hot they can get really hot and they kind of you know they kind of go through their little lulls in the game but then they also find their like you know five minute span where it looks like they just can't miss a shot yeah Mm -hmm. and they've kind of been going through their games like that and their floor like their comfortable floor looks like closer to what clemson's like not ceiling but what how like they have to play a little bit past like their ability. Yeah. Whereas just to meet Arizona at like their kind of like uh. coasting level. So I just don't see a way where Clemson is going to win this game. Um, I need you riding with me on the upsets. <laughs> but that being said, <laughs> Clemson has shown some toughness and gritty grittiness on the defense. I think they can make it tough, especially a player like Caleb Love. If you can just keep him off his game. Um, which he, we know he's had games where he can go like one for twenty and yeah, he's like he can get in his own head. For it, sure. Yeah, so if you, if you can make it tough for them, uh, I think you can keep this within the number. So I'm gonna take Clemson plus the seven and a half. Don't love it, but have to ride. Have to ride, baby. Yeah. Go Let's Tigers! Go. I'll be at the game. Go Tigers! All right, next game. National championship rematch. Oh, yeah. 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 This game. is an electric. I didn't realize it was a national championship I forgot rematch. It was, so I was going over yeah. everything. I was like, wow, this is a big game. UConn, SDSU, UConn, ten and a half point favorites. Biggest number of the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, total 135.5. Really low total, too. So they have huge spread, low total for yeah. a national championship rematch. Um, Mario, I'm going back to you here. Uh-huh. Is there any way SDSU <clears throat> can keep this close or pull it out? It's just like, especially March Madness, like, it's so hard not to take double a double digit. digit. Yeah. yeah. Underdog, just take the points because it's like, there's, especially with that low of a, of an over i don't know i mean i i just really like the line is saying 
UConn's just going to run away with this. Yep. And it's just not even – like, they're just going to shut out SDSU. SDSU maybe scores 50 points. Like, Yeah, and the total makes it feel like a blowout. I don't know if I'm like reading it, that wrong. But no, it I mean, like it, it looks yeah. like it's going to be uh, 80 to 50. 80 to 50. 80 to 50. Yeah. That's right. close. Wait. That's close. close. <laughs> that'd be that hit the over. Yeah, no, you're right. Let me tell you something, bro. <laughs> okay. right, right. But um, yeah, I I don't. So I mean, Vegas knows. I'm just gonna go with what they're telling me. I'm gonna take UConn minus the ten and a half. I wow. don't love it because I mean I. A team that was in the Natty last year, you know, like I know. How do you not take plus ten and a half? But I don't know. It just it seems like they want everyone to take that. So I'm just gonna take UConn minus ten and a half. All right, Mike. You with, uh, you with Mario on that? Yeah, pretty similar line of thinking, um, except SDSU, I mean, just based off the level of competition, SDSU barely beat UAB in the first round, and then they move on and they play Yale. And, I mean, Yale, of course, was an upset yeah. in the first round, but it's like they're not a very high caliber yeah. competition. No, they haven't played a lot. Like, they haven't uh, they're not yeah, insane. They haven't and UConn, I mean, granted, they, beat St- they played St- Stenson, but they beat them by 39, and then they played Northwestern. Again, not really the best, but they beat them by almost 20. They beat them by 17. No, they murdered them, yeah. Right? And so I mean, it's like... they a buzzsaw. Yeah, they, yeah. yeah, and so, I mean, it's just... It's a clear UConn domination. I'm also taking the over... Um, UConn, the over a million, zillion, trillion points. Wow. Well, Wait, did he open with, like, I'm on your... Didn't you bet San Diego? No. Oh, I thought you bet I took UConn minus 10 and a half. Oh, no. I was, I was trying yeah, to. no, I... Unfortunately, I don't know. I, I guess maybe this is just consensus. Maybe it's not a bad thing. But yeah, I'm on the same wavelength as you guys. I just think UConn covers. Um, yeah. They haven't. Neither of these teams have played anyone yet in the tournament, so we haven't really seen anything too impressive from either of them. Mm-hmm. But UConn just looks like they're just handling business. Yeah. Like it, when they played, not even, I mean, it was a 16 seed game, but this is kind of similar to the McNeese game where at the tip off. I th- I'm not. I wasn't watching the live line, but I'm sure that went from 24 and a half to 33. Like mm-hmm. the second they all just lined up on the court, and you looked at them, you're like, "Oh shit!" No, the first 10 They're seconds when you just see how the UConn players move on the court, yeah, compared to that, you're over. just like, "Oh yeah." Yeah, it's, it's not even close. So I think this might be a similar situation. SDSU's played a lot worse than they did last year. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's necessarily the same team. UConn just looks unstoppable. So I'm riding UConn until proven wrong. Yeah. For, uh, first off, this under rip it. It's gonna be free. They're wow. Very- uh, people don't know, San Diego State's one of the best defensive teams in the country, and UConn is, when an offensive team goes against a very good defensive team in the tournament, normally the offense slows down, not the other way around. And that's why the revenge game is going to be for San Diego State. Oh. San Diego State outright win. I don't need, I don't need, wow. I don't need the cover. Wow. Uh, defense is going to win this game. The final score is going to be shit, like 61-58. Just absolute dog wow. shit. The f- first half, I think San Diego State actually starts up, and UConn's five-star players, better players, keep it close. But I just think the defense on San Diego's side and UConn, I mean, there, there's some pressure on UConn. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's one seed trying to go yep. back-to-back. It's a 10-point favorite. This game with, like, 10 minutes is ten minutes is like three-point game, and you have San Diego State's defense. I'm going to take the defense. I think outright win. I respect the pick. Yeah. I respect yeah. the pick. I, I don't think it. there's a lot of people in the world going to be picking against UConn on the money line. I respect it. It's going to be me. Right? Yeah. yeah, I got you. Wow, that's actually crazy because I couldn't agree more. Um, wow. wow. But, but my favorite pick for this game is actually San Diego State first half plus the six. Um, okay. And okay. I, 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 and my second favorite pick is the under in this game. I mean, talk about a perfect revenge spot. And when the, like when teams play each other again, and especially both, both games that both these teams have played in this tournament so far have been no more than 140 points. And... Mm. Like he said, San Diego State being a very notorious defensive team, yeah, they could easily keep this within the ten and a half. Everyone just thinks, oh, like, and honestly, how could Vegas not think that UConn's going to beat them? Mm-hmm. Uh, honestly, how could they? But it's it's the March Madness, and yeah, mm-hmm. San Diego State hasn't played anyone either. But we haven't played seen any them play anyone good yet, so we don't know what they're capable of. I mean, Jaden Ladee's a great player, yeah. So we're gonna see. It's almost the exact same team San Diego State had last year, no, as fun. well as. Uh, UConn. So yeah. we'll just see. I mean, quick question: Doesn't it like mark them down if they only play to a caliber of their competition, though? Right. Who? If, disagree. Isn't that kind of what you're saying? So that they play, SDSU. Well, when they play good teams, they, up, they just when they play win. good team, they keep it close. Yeah, they, they play the to the thing. caliber of their competition. That means. I mean, instead when they play of just the good teams, long and but staying as long dominant as, all the way. But as long as they win, but it's not college football. They don't have to win by a million to get the. That's true. All right. Yeah, that's just one good point. Yeah, that's honestly kind of. Like some, re- you see that happening in all sports with some really good teams. Like, you know, we talked about jo- Georgia all season, 
they just kind of coast in football through, when they yeah. play other teams they never cover a spread because it's like they just kind of play to their competition but when they that's play fair. a good team they get up for the game that's but fair. i kind of like that i do think something that just came in my head when you guys were picking san diego state and then i picked clemson for the first game was like we had a decent amount of upsets in the first round and literally zero upsets except for Clemson. It was 15 to 1 on the money line. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if this week, if you'll see some people going back to the favorites for the first time in a while. Because mm-hmm. they kind of had to throw people off the trail well, from the yeah. money underdogs. And I, then maybe this week's just like if snapping 80% off. 80% of the money is on UConn. Or 80% of the bets is on UConn minus mm-hmm. the 10 now. There's, oh, yeah. There's not going to oh, be people betting. I think it already it's, is. It, yeah, yeah, it's it's is. 99% of oh, the money no is on UConn. Yeah. So <laughs> I had no idea. I didn't even look. Yeah, yeah. no, it's going to be 75% UConn. 75% of the bets, 99% of the money on yeah, UConn. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next game is another huge game. Uh, this one's following yeah. the Clemson game at Staples this or Crypto game. Come Arena. Yeah, for sure. Number one seed, North Carolina. Number four seed, Alabama. UNC minus three and a half. Total 173.5. Ryan, what? Four and a half. It's four and a half? Yeah, it's four and a half. Oh, oh, four and a half. UNC minus four and a half, one seventy three point five. I think it was three and a half earlier. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah, might have gone off. Yeah. Um, Ryan, I'm starting <laughs> with you here. Huge total for the over under one seventy three five. I mean, both these teams move around. Yeah, they fly. Is this an upset spot? Is this gonna be a close game? It's it's a weird. The number's weird. It's a little too big for me. Uh, it, the number's saying the game's gonna be close no matter what because Bama yeah. scores out the universe, and that means North Carolina will also score out the universe, which I. I don't disagree with. I think North Carolina, I mean, they've been on fire. They look unbelievably dominant so far. Um, but like I said, I'm going to stick with my thing. Best player on the floor is Mark Sears on Alabama. He's dropping 30 a game. He's going to do it again this game. I think they went out right. I think four and a half is too ma- way too many points for a team as good as Alabama. And that's beaten a bunch of teams. I know they were a little sh- shaky at the beginning of the season. Yeah. But they played every SEC team. They played all these teams. They played number one teams. They played Kansas and they beat them. So, like, I think this is a good, perfect situation. I, I truly just think points is just too much. Like, there's just too many points going to be scored for Alabama for North Carolina to keep up with. That being said, I do like the under. I'm Ooh, not, I'm not yeah. going to be betting a college basketball game this week 16 to score 180 points. Yeah. Like, that's ridiculous. So, I like a good, like, hope. I think it'll be, like, 78 to, like, 65, and Bama just Oh, like them. a... A route. Yeah, I think Mark Sears, you guys will, if you don't know Mark Sears, you'll learn about him. He gets 30 a game. He's going to go nuts. He's just a score, a pure score that you need in these type of games. I don't, North Carolina, they're really solid. I know they have pieces everywhere. They're old. They're old. Very they have RJ old. Davis. Very they have uh, Baycott. Baycott. But I just think Their that, bigs like, are very good. I mean, I like, RJ Davis has been their leading scorer, and that was never the case until this year. It was always someone else on the team, and I just don't think he's the guy that's going to carry them. And I just think Mark Sears will. I love Alabama here. All right, Tate? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, Alabama's guard play has been really, like, unstoppable. Their team looks really, really good. Um, but UNC is my favorite to win it all. And um, the, I'm not going to shy away from that here. I think they, they actually cover easy in this game. I think their bigs are too good. I think Baycott's going to absolutely dominate in the paint. Mm-hmm. Um, I do actually like the under as well. So I'm gonna take the under of 173 and a half. Um, I I I love the four and a half. I think UNC is just playing on a different le- different level. Bama struggled last game, like weirdly struggled against Grand Canyon. And Grand Canyon is like, I mean, I don't know, I, I don't know what's what's going on with that <coughs> team or whatever. But they're they're they play big, they yeah. play physical, and Bama like struggled in weird spots. They should have killed them. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe like maybe Bama could have killed them. And like we're talking about with San Diego State, like they just played down to their opponents it doesn't matter they got the job done whatever yeah it's march they too. were they were alabama was in control in that in that most of that game anyway so um there is that but i'm not going to shy away from my favorite to win the tournament i love unc here yeah yep. i uh i saw something the other day that was comparing the average age of the starters for the oklahoma city thunder to the north carolina tar heels <laughs> um off my point four yeah thing, four yeah. of the players are the same age it's like 24 and a half, 23 yeah. 23 22 and there's like a 21 and then unc has one who's the freshman it's like 18 or 19 so this is like the oldest team in yeah. the tournament mm-hmm. they've had the most experience they've been in the tournament <clears throat> like deep in the tournament national championship level yeah. runs yeah. um with baycott and rj davis so i'm gonna lean on the experience here i don't i don't think they'll get phased in this spot uh, Bama, I've never really been as high on as some other people up here. And we've seen the S- U- uh, the SEC just be really bad this tournament. Except, I mean, Bama and Tennessee, obviously the two that advanced. 
But I don't. I think this just shows Bama's schedule might not have been as impressive. Their resume might not be as impressive as it looked to go into the tournament because everyone's like SEC's, you know, amazing, and then yeah. all these teams lose. So yeah, I'm riding UNC, and I actually love the over a lot. I think there's a whole lot of points in this game. I think it's back and forth, close game. UNC wins by like six at the end, so barely love the spread. But I think the over is pretty. I could see this being like high 90s for both teams. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Uh, Definitely with you on the over here. Um, actually, I'm completely against Ryan. I'm sorry, Ryan. But nothing new. We're back pre- to we're back to no. I mean, I just no, he's with you. He's with you. I mean, I, I'm with you in spirit, but not in this game. Uh, this is pretty simple. It comes down to UNC has defense and Alabama doesn't have any. Uh, when you look at the actual statistical rankings, Bama of course has the number one offense in the nation. They average ninety point seven points per game. But here's the thing. Their defense is number 346, or 348. They allow basically 81 points a game, and they're going against UNC, who has a pretty solid offense, number 16 in the nation, very, very good, at 81.8 points per game. And their defense isn't half bad either. They're in the top 100, top 75 even, number uh, with allowing 70 points per game. Look, <laughs> That's not fantastic, yeah. That's not well, great, but that's better than Alabama. Well, so that's the thing. Is when you, when, you have, yeah. when you have a list that's 500 teams deep, and you're within, like, you know... Yeah, I want that list filtered for, like, the power. Like, okay, the, I, I, I see Alabama what scores 110, and the other team has, like, 70, and they're just letting them take laps and threes to, like, eight. I mean, my, my logic of this is that UNC clearly has a high-powered offense. You don't get to be the number 16. Oh, they can score, yeah. Or yeah, average 82 points a game without... Being like For pretty sure. solid and being able to score. Wait, what? And what not num- only that. What, what number was Alabama's defense? Three hundred and forty-eight. It says here there's three hundred and fifty-one Division One basketball programs. So, so, they're, so they're, they're, there you they're go. Dead Almost dead last. They're, they're, fact check it. Then. So they're dead damn last. near dead last. Then fact check. Uh, they. I mean, they allow eighty point nine points per game. That's a lot. But of points. all I'm saying is that I think. UNC is going to have the ability to at least slow them down for a couple. Um or a couple of possessions, and they're going to make the most of pretty much all of theirs going against a defense that is pretty much non-existent. So I actually have UNC by a mile here, uh, easily covering, and my bigger bet is going to be on the over of 173.5 or 100. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 173.5. Reason why is because Bama, as previously mentioned, has scored over 100 points in three of their last five games. But UNC is also averaging 84.6. Points per game in their Nowhere last near. five. Nowhere near like 20, 20 points. points <laughs> 16 Look, points. But all I'm saying it's is the that, over, though. It's what you need. Yeah, exactly. The combined total is 184 or whatever. I like it. I like that. I like hearing that over. logic from a guy who doesn't watch college basketball. I know. I like the over. Over, 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 over UNT and the over bank. He says, UNT and the over. He goes, UNT and the over. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Lots of points. UNT and the over. Don't listen to him, Michael. UNT and the over. I'm writing that. That's my exact... This is my quant. (laughs) (laughs) He's my math specialist. (laughs) He got there. (laughs) We got there. How many units is Tyler down in March Madness then? Let's not talk about that. (laughs) We don't need to talk about me, Nice. It's It's revolution. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything comes around. Um, Yeah, I'm going to keep this really simple. Um, I think UNC runs runs away with this pretty easily. I think they cover this. Uh, I think they win by like 10. Uh, I I love the under, though. Yeah. I'm with you on the under. Oh, lit. I think Tate had the under too, right? Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Okay, so UNC and under me and Tate. Um, yeah, it just comes down to for me. I just think UNC is a more well-rounded UNC team. Uh, Bama obviously has the guard play. Uh, Spears or Sears? Sears. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, Sears is Sears. He might drop forty. I haven't really been watching too much of him, but I just checked the box score and I just see his name with like. 30 points, a and million. I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah he's, 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 he's pretty much a carbon the copy. The kid can play. He, yeah. he can ball. Yeah. You know, you've seen Terrence Shannon Jr. Yeah, no, that's oh, pretty much I carbon copy. Uh, yeah, player. so uh, I don't doubt that he's good, but I just, the big thing for me is UNC, uh, I just like the way they look defensively, especially Baycott. Baycott, like, say what you want. Mike brought up these stats about, you know, how they are for the season, which, I mean. Yeah, all these numbers. No, 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 I'm, I'm not. I'm a numbers I'm not. Guy. Shying away no, from the numbers, cool. yeah, the numbers are the numbers, whatever. But yeah. it's like when you get to the tournament, like it's, you, world, it's a different yeah. world. You have yeah, to everyone. pretty much put the season aside, and totally. teams play completely different. How do yeah. they did? You can't hate the rest UN, of my UNC's day. look like a top. <laughs> well, they've looked like a top defensive team from all the teams I've witnessed. Like Baycott has been an absolute animal. Dude's getting like five blocks a game. So, uh, I just 
I mean, this is, either Alabama shoots unbelievably from behind the arc and they win the game. Uh, I just don't see that happening. So I think Electric. that's the that's their only out. So yeah, no, this, this is definitely going to be one of the best games though for oh, sure. Of oh, the Sweet yeah. Sixteen, this for game sure. is electric. Yeah. Last game on Thursday is Iowa State and Illinois. Another battle. Oh, Spread yeah. is one and a half. Shout out Grandpa. Oh, such a good line. shout out Grandpa. Shout, shout out Grandpa. Grandpa. Shout out Grandpa. Shout out Grandpa. Shout Iowa State game. minus Legacy one and game. a half. Yeah. Total one forty six point five. Michael, Grandpa it's a Grandpa game. game. It's a legacy game oh, for you. Oh, yeah. Are you riding, Grandpa? I actually <laughs> am. Mo- wait, whoa, 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 wait, pause. <laughs> wait, pause. No. Uh, I'm writing Illinois. All right. So let's go cheese he- or not cheese heads. Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. It up. Wait, what are what is Illinois? I don't think they have a mask. Yeah, they do. No, nah, they. Don't that have. was your. That was no, no, the take. No. Yeah, That's they, his analysis. Uh, it's the Illinois, the Illinois brick nothings? walls. It's just the Illinois nothing. The brick walls. Right. The brick walls. We'll call yeah, them the brick walls. They're gonna throw up bricks. They're gonna build the wall. They're gonna throw up bricks. They're gonna build the wall. Yep. Build and the Michael's wall. Writing. It's gonna be a great wall. <laughs> it's gonna be a the beautiful grandpa wall. Pick. The grandpa pick. The grandpa, the grandpa wall. pick. Uh, but no. Here's the thing. Here comes Let's get down to a nitty gritty. Uh, more numbers for Mario because Mario. No, no, no. Illinois. This, this game is actually funny because Tate mentioned it in the last uh, matchup that we talked about. This game is pretty much identical to Bama versus GCU. The reason why I say that is because GCU has an unbelievable defense and a non-existent offense, whereas Bama has an unbelievable offense and a non-existent defense. The point that I'm trying to get here is that you get an overpowered offense versus an overpowered defense and the offense wins. And so Illinois, with the number six offense averaging 84.6 points per game, going against Iowa State, um, Caitlin Clark is not in this game. So oh my God. down with Iowa State. What? Uh, you, you're convinced How do you not she's do- on Iowa State and not Iowa oh for the God. win. You've oh, said this like crazy. 90 times. It's just like, I've, I've corrected it a billion times. All these times. stats just to throw in a girl basketball player in the tournament. Well, he well, also thought she was on Iowa State. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, regardless. What side are you on for the game? He goes, Caitlin Clark. Let me tell you Iowa something. State. <laughs> regardless. Let me tell you about my grandpa. <laughs> regard me. <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> regard him, bar. Money line plus 105. Mike, that's a big money line for Mike. Remember back plus in the days? That's that, would, that would be on his upset. That's that a huge be, upset for Mike. I've got a pretty big upset. Minus 105. It's e- it's even. It's it's a, it's pick, a pick em. em. It's a pick em. It's a big upset, Mario. Are you riding? Plus one hundred. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah plus one hundred. Yeah, plus one hundred. I mean, it's a big pick. They weren't favored. Dog. No, you're so right. You're so sure. Sure. Mario, are you riding Michael? <laughs> <laughs> or Grandpa? Was it one? like pass it on a double? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not riding Mike. I'm not riding his Grandpa. Um, <laughs> That's disrespect. <laughs> yeah, dishonor the family. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, whatever that means. Uh, Are we gonna have to bleep that out? Someone bleep that out. No definition. All right, throw it up. Are we gonna <laughs> talk about <laughs> <Sepuku? Or laughs> like in... No, I'll get, so so seppuku, right, guys? Uh, back in Japan. Yeah. You dishonor your family. Wasn't you... he from Korea? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence, Shannon, Junior. Junior. That's all you need to know. Right. Illinois. That's all you need to know. Agreed. Illinois over Terrence Shannon Jr. Agreed. Go brick walls. Um, I think this is these two teams are a coin flip. Yeah. Um, the winner of this game is going to lose to whoever wins in the UConn game. Yeah. Mm. In my opinion. So I think that team goes to the Final Four. Um, but for this game, you bet on the best player in a coin flip scenario. You want to be able to give him the ball at the end of the game. Yep. Uh, he's going to close this one down. As much as Terrence. I like Iowa State, I think it's going to be a really good game. Mm-hmm. I don't think either is. <laughs> Things teams are a blowout. I'm not betting a total, but just Illinois money line. Yep. Whoever wins this game will be going to the final four. Oh, oh disagree. I love that. Well, if you learn, if you thought when about my you last take, well, what, SDSU, SDSU versus SDSU Illinois, you regardless, regardless. that's a hard take. Um, Illinois will be killing Iowa State this game. Do you want to do, a, do you want to do a side bet of what hundred dollars just on like the winner? You take the winner of this game. I'll take the yeah, winner yeah. of the UConn game to go to the final yeah. four. All right, deal. Boom. Wow. I love that. If UConn loses, I'm just. Match a millionaire. <laughs> I got wow. the whatever. But um, uh, Terrence Shannon Jr., if you can bet his points, will probably be at 23 and a half. Uh, bet it all the way to 40. He's oh. gonna absolutely destroy this Iowa State team. Mm. Um, there's certain players that are just better than everyone else. He's one of them. Mm. He's gonna be the guy that in every you always have those people in the I know we had Jack, whatever, Cockle, 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 Cockle
he like he was out in the second round. You know, he doesn't get that flashy. It's not like a Johnny Juice ain't deep in the tournament. Yeah. This is gonna be the Johnny deep guy Ju- that gets a high draft pick. Terrence Shannon Jr. going for forty. Yeah. They're gonna kill Iowa State. Ooh, Tate. Love, love Illinois. So that's a sweep. Hey! That's, 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 that's a sweep. That's a sweep. Put him in the United. Consensus undefeated in consensus picks in March Madness. All I'm pew, saying pew, for the mortal pew, parlay, pew. someone better have this as the mortal since it's a consensus. I don't know who's pew, doing pew, it. Pew, we'll pew. say it later, but or someone just someone add it as a sixth leg. Just oh, someone, yeah. someone have this as their mortal. If no one does it, I'll make it my mortal. Sorry, go All ahead. Right. That's verbal. Yeah, it's verbal. Take and the under. All right. Okay. okay. Under. Moving to Friday. That was electric. I love that consensus. Thank yeah. so much. Um, Two Marquette versus eleven Jeez. NC State. Worst oh. game. Marquette <laughs> minus six and a half. Total one fifty one point five. I'll kick us off here. Um, this is I had NC State in my Sweet Sixteen for the sole reason of riding the hottest team in basketball. Ow. They won the ACC, who has the most teams remaining in the tournament. Yep. So like they are on an absolute tear. <laughs> um, obviously, you can say their level of competition wasn't that crazy i mean it wasn't a crazy upset in the first round then they get to go be the favorites the next round so it wasn't that hard um i'm never i'm not a huge fan of marquette but i'm just riding nc state there's not an, any analysis that's going to go into this besides i'm riding the hot hand and they're giving me them as a pretty substantial underdog yeah so it's march shit can happen um acc champions give me nc state money line with the upset here hottest team basketball i love that no yeah um i was when we were talking about our favorite teams of getting the tournament i said marquette i love him so much but i didn't know if tyler kolek was going to be healthy and be able to play he is now fully healthy and he's shown in the last two games he had a double double i think in both games and he's just been balling their defense is just so much better they have also they just have a good coaching staff throughout the thing or throughout the game where like they just beat big guys like, they, they don't have the biggest team. They don't have the best offense. They don't have the most flashy things. But they will – I mean, Burns is not going to be able to score like he did every game and take over games. He's going to get slowed down here. Famous I think, last words. Mm. No, I mean, I'll bet any amount of money on anything if anyone wants mm. to bet. But Burns New is – I'll bet the spread, too. You can have the points. Any amount of money, money on anything. anything anyone wants to Someone bet. cook up something juicy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I think Burns, they push – the Burns is so good because he gets deep in the paint because he's so big. I think he stays outside – the paint, and he has to work his way, which I don't think he'll do against Marquette. Marquette, easier. I think it's like the only blowout, 20-point blowout of the whole uh, mm. Sweet 16. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, I I absolutely love that. I mean, if you watch the way Marquette plays basketball, it's basically you give the ball to Tyler Kolek, he drives into the paint, dishes to the wide-open guy, which there's always two wide-open guys. on. If, yeah. if those guards make their shots on the perimeter or just be smart with the basketball, they will they will kill NC State. And I'm not saying I'm not saying they will make all their shots, but they will have a lot of open looks because Tyler Kolek mm. is playing great. He he distracts all the defenders. And when they when they do when they don't actually go in and double triple team him when he goes into the paint, then he just scores. Like he's just smarter. I I love the way he's playing. He's fully healthy. This is this is easy Marquette. Like we said, NC State has had an Aren't easier road to the Sweet take? Sixteen. Huh? It's March. Yeah. Well, let's not forget NC State. The only double should have and almost lost to Oakland. Oh, mm-hmm. I know. So like let's not like Marquette's control March, one every game. Like it's March, you just gotta roll the dice sometimes. Yeah. Mm. Only double digit seed. You think Vegas wants a tournament with no double digit seeds? I yes. love the over, by the way, too. One fifty one and a half. I love you think it. they do? Ooh. Yes. I don't know if they want. Marquette, Vegas, Marquette, Vegas Marquette loves the smalls and the talls. Mm. So you gotta you gotta Mike, keep one. Are you tall riding over. Tate and Ryan? Uh no, I'm not riding Tate and Ryan. But I just want to prelude this by saying mm, mm. one of my favorite dogs or one of my favorite animals is a dog. I'm a dog person. Which breed? Uh, Which my, breed of dog? Actually, I was actually just about to say that. I knew you uh, were. My favorite breed of plan. dog is a husky, which looks the most similar to a wolf, like a wolf pack, mm, mm. but down with the wolves. Marquette is going to destroy. NC State has played nobody. So you're riding and, Peyton Ryan. No, I'm riding, riding Marquette. Go what? Marquette. Who's Marquette? <laughs> when did you meet a guy named Marquette? You haven't told us about Marquette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do, know, man. Inappropriate. <laughs> uh, this is a children's show, a family show. Where'd yeah. you meet him? I don't think it is. West Hollywood? This joke is getting old. Yeah. All right. Uh, go Marquette. It's actually brand new. <laughs> <laughs> go Marquette. Um, Shout out Marquette, friend of the pod. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> friend of Mike's. <laughs> friend of Mike's and Mike's Mike. Yeah. Wait, what? Think about it. Right. Nope. <laughs> I'm, gonna get, I'm just gonna move on. <laughs> I'll get like, pause. Like it. It's like the computer thing. resume. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll get, get <laughs> loading. Like, um, yeah, this is gonna be. Listen, like Tyler said, this is March. Madness. Sweet sixteen. Bracket. 
Sweet 16, you see the little two next to Marquette? You see the little 11 next to NC State? That's literally my whole entire Nick no, 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 State. But in this game, it's just one game. All right? Two halves of basketball. <clears throat> you're 40 five. Minute, 40 minutes. You're five versus my five. Yep. It's just two, It's just five people. A little more than that, but... <laughs> no, no, no. No, that's all it is. It's pretty it, much... That's all it is. You're five so versus my five. And you just walk out into the court. It's not about 11 seed. All those, those numbers go away. It's just... Yep. Who's hot? And I think the culmination, like Tyler pointed out, about... The teams they beat, NC State, you know, to win the ACC championship. Then the momentum. Yeah, they haven't really played anyone, but it's still momentum that they're making it this far into the tournament. Like, all those players in their heads believe, like, we could beat any team. Yeah. There's not one team that they are going to walk onto the court against and feel like they don't have a chance. So, just give me the hot hand. Give me NC State. Upset. I love when and we're plus, the same upset. Plus six and a half. Give me some. Well, Mike, what are you doing? Oh, Good defense. Was, yeah, yeah, my lock up skin. Defense. Yeah, Mike's Dude, out here. Down with the wolf, Mike. Down with the wolf. Wolf pack. Golden Eagles. Give baby. me a howl, Mike. Mike, Mike. Golden, Give him a howl. Mike, Mike. Oh. Golden Give him a dead howl. Dead dog howl. Ha-ha. Ha-ha. Jesus. I mean, what was that? Spirit. I, that mean, I was, like, like, I was like, trying to pump you up over here. That wasn't a howl at all. No, like an eagle. That might be a strike. I don't know. There's something about it. Just I feel like Mike shouldn't be able to get out a pick on this game. Wait, what? No, I have a I have a great pick on this. Oh, I feel like we should skip over it. Um. Next game, Mike's Purdue, Gonzaga, Purdue, five and a half point favorites, total 154.5. Mm. Tate, mm. go ahead and start us off. Wee woo. Uh, yeah, no, this, this, this has got to be, I, I couldn't have less of a read on a game than this game this week. <laughs> um, Purdue and Gonzaga, you know, I, wow. On, honestly, I, I hate Purdue. Mm. Um, Oiler makers. But they've been playing really great. I mean, they've been, they've been the same as UConn. They've been killing teams. They've, they've been really killing teams. Yeah. yeah. The Boiler makers. You're right. Oh, oh, yeah. That's what they are, Mike. He knew um, like two mascots this week, so he had to make sure he got that yeah. one in there. Yeah. 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 Sneak that one jab in there. Uh, first of all, in this game, I love, love the over. I mean, they're just, I mean, Purdue, you can't stop Purdue from scoring. Love that. And then if they're suggesting that if it's five and a half, the game's going to be kind of close. I think yeah, Gonzaga stop, keeps stop. up with them. 155 or one, yeah. 154 and a half, easy, easy over. Um, but I'm going to take the March underdog. I love Gonzaga here on the off mm. chance that they just cover the five and a half. They don't even have to. They don't even have to win. All right, this game, this game is going to be electric. We got Ed versus Ek. <laughs> it's going to be the most an all-time names matchup. All-time yeah. names wow. matchup. Um, Ed Ek. Ed Ek. That'd be a hard name if it was just Ed Ek. Ed Ek. Let's hey, just say Ed is going to be buddy, fucking Ike. up Ek. What? Sorry. What do you think? No, you, know, you can say the pick. The mic. Go ahead. What do you think? What do you? What do you? No, think? Mike, it's your turn. It's your turn, Mike. Ahead, Mike. I was talking about Take the mic. No, I'm sorry. All right. Well, he's talking about Drake. Yeah, he. Lo- I mean, he loves talking about Drake. But we have Ed First who's going to destroy I'm Ek. Sad. He's going to have thirty and twenty. It's going to be the easiest game ever. Purdue should win by twenty, in my opinion. Um, a good. Some things that happen <clears> in this tournament. Teams get hot. They play the right team at the right time. I think Gonzaga did play at Kansas, the perfect team, at the wrong time for them. They were banged up. They looked good in the first a couple games or the first game, and then they. I mean, we all knew going into it. If they didn't have McCuller back, it wasn't going to be good for them. Dickinson was running around with a broken shoulder, so I just think it was a perfect spot for Gonzaga, and they're about to face a team that only has their mind on a championship, nothing more. Everything's a failure this year. Doesn't matter what they do unless they win the championship. And Edie knows if you've seen his interviews and stuff, he's locked in. There's no way to stop this fool. I've been. Off, I don't know why I've been off this fool. He is the best player in the country. I could at, talk about these shooters and these guards. He's unstoppable. There's no one that could stop him. He goes into the paint. He can do whatever he wants whenever he wants. He gets fouled. Like He shoots like 15 free throws. It's ridiculous. He's going to be a million this game. Bet everything he has, every prop he has. I think Purdue should cover this handedly throughout the game. It, after like eight minutes, murder. Yeah. Um, I've been against Gonzaga both their first two games, and they mm. have made quick work. Of their first two, <laughs> <make> of <laughs> yeah, I mean, they have been shooting out the gym. That second half against Kansas, I don't think they missed a shot. Like they, they made they so went many thirteen threes. for sixteen. I don't know. They just couldn't miss yeah. anything that game. Um, Produce a different beast. They walk all over this Gonzaga team. So it's not. I have nothing. I don't have much to say here. This is just Purdue the easy way. It's kind of the same thing I'm doing with UConn. These, in my opinion, these look like the best two teams in the country right now. And they just look like they've just been handling business on a like direct collision course in the national championship. It's not the national championship I picked, but that's what it's looked like to me so far. Uh, yeah, my mindset for this was pretty similar to Tate's, where I was like, "Wow, this is almost a, a toss up." When I go toss ups, I kind of just you know find a stat and then 
pick that stat, and then ride with that stat. Yeah, we know. And so, random stat what, generator. No, <laughs> so here is what I honed in on, and that is fouls per game. So Purdue oh. av- is number five in the nation on opponents' fouls, like a, the amount of fouls that they get fouled, right? <laughs> <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> I need an English yeah, word. What, what is the stat? <laughs> so the the stat of fouls that they foul to get fouled. How many times they get fouled or how yes. many times they go to the yes. foul? Line? How many times they get fouled? They, so that's the same thing. So Purdue, so Purdue, fouled, or, so Purdue saying, averages getting fouled 20.6 times So you're saying game. exactly what Ryan just said about Edie getting the free throw line a billion times a game. Yeah. yeah. That was just, you're just repeating what he said in a yeah, more I'm giving, yeah. roundabout run. He's giving yeah, the exact okay. number. I'm giving numbers. Number. Okay. Well, you know, he's, he's the your quant. <laughs> he's the philosopher. <laughs> he's the philosopher. You're the quant. He's PQ. I'm not. Like, you're my CPA. I'm not. <laughs> All right. I have well, that written. Somebody's doing my taxes. Um, it's not me. Mike has never done taxes. Mike has like, never done taxes. Shout out IRS. Right, yeah, right, right, right. Invest the government. <laughs> I do my taxes. I don't, do my taxes. Actually, don't Cap. audit this guy. If he actually no, thinks I've been the one doing his taxes, he hasn't found me. I've given you every W2 for the past four years. Yeah, none of them. He said you posted that ad on Craigslist. I don't know. Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, I got anyway, like a, paid someone Gonzaga in India, like is number 186 in getting to the free throw line. Or, sorry, just getting fouled in general. Uh, they average 16.8 fouls. <laughs> And in total, that's 20.6 versus 16.8. That's about six to eight points if they convert their free throws. What? And the spread is five and a half, so Purdue all day here. Wait, did, you just, did, did you just say free throws. all fouls like, convert to the free throw line? How can you even okay, convert not, Okay, but like if you're in the bonus, right? So... <laughs> if that's the, only after but seven. But if, but my if you're question, in the bonus plus. Is no, my, bonus. my question bonus is, plus. it's less than four foul difference. And you said if they convert their free throws... That's an eight point. I said a six to eight point. But that it's six. Every but there's six, there's eight three. Eight. Fa- I don't know. Six to eight. It, Purdue by a mile. Okay. Purdue. Purdue. Go, Purdue. Go Purdue by a foul mile. I could have done yeah. without that last four minutes. <laughs> Mario. I mean, stat you started guy. it. Picking a stat and riding with it. Bang. Um. Stats. I've never had a more just absolute dead read on a game than this game. Really? Yeah. A- absolute dead read. Mario's dead reads. Do do I have to give out the pick now? Is it no. immortal? Yeah. No, give it I mean, out. If you don't want to give it out, don't. No, we can't. Yeah, it can stay what we do, baby. Okay. Hold it tight. I'm gonna talk about this game. Yeah, right. get me excited, oh, baby. That's it's up to you. Do whatever you want. He's talking about it later. That means this is mortal. Um, oh. next game, Houston <clears throat> versus Duke. Houston, Houston minus four and a half Houston. total, one thirty three point five. Let me get Mike out of the way here, then we can have a <laughs> yeah, general Mike, conversation. Mike, it's kind of tough yeah. putting him in the middle recently, but... <laughs> Don't hold your breath, Mike Sock. I was going to say... say Whoa, it. you're going to shave. Right, 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 right. Right. Shout out New York City, Soho, south of Houston. Houston <laughs> looks like Houston. Bro. So... Wait. What? No, no. <laughs> I need to no. run that... 15 you seconds. Got, you guys don't that. understand. Rewind that. Dude. No. Mike, Mike sees all the equations. I just saw so many... <laughs> s- I, he only Every said equation, syllables there. Is, like he no. didn't. <laughs> nothing was he worked. said, "Shout out New York." He said, "Show, show with Houston, Houston." Houston, 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 Houston. Wait, which one of these whatever. teams reminds you of New York? The one in Houston, <laughs> Texas, or the one in North Carolina? Well, Houston is spelled the same way as Houston Street in New York City. Yeah. Is there not a Houston Street in every state? Every state. I mean, I don't know. I don't okay. know if they okay. all pronounce it that way. Oh, there you go, Mike. God. So you're picking Houston. I, He's uh, a philosopher. <laughs> No. Philosophize. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably wrong here, and I wrote, I'm probably wrong here, but Duke. Ooh. Oh. So, uh, Duke, yeah, I'm, yeah, probably I'm, I'm probably wrong. I'm probably wrong. Is that immortal? Than Duke, no, I'm probably wrong. Is that immortal? No, no. no. You're going to love my mortal. Uh, Mario, I don't think I will. No, Mario. No, trust me, you will. Trust me. <coughs> um, That's not good. I'm in trouble. Okay. <laughs> you guys are going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, when we were making our bracket last week, uh, I talked about, I just... Sense some sort of magic around this Duke team. I don't know why. I just felt like they're just going to make a run this tournament. Um, so that being said, I don't know. Houston's a... They're good, but something just feels off about them, you know? So I can't really quite put my finger on it, but just give me Duke plus the four and a half. Uh, I think it's also an outright win spot for Duke. Yeah. So that's all I got. No, I actually... See. I felt the same way you did pre-tournament about this. And this is the game... I said I was waiting for yeah. in the last episode when Houston and Duke meet in the Sweet 16 that I was going to hammer the money line because I think Houston just being the one seed and having won the first two games, people kind of forget about that massive collapse against Iowa State. We know they didn't play everyone and all this. 
we talked about that game quite a bit um, last week, but I think everyone's going to be off this Duke team from how they ended in the ACC tournament. They're the four seed. And Coach K isn't there. There's not that, like, no one's really hyping them up. And Duke is just the blue blood I'm riding with. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. nothing that can get me off this team. Um, I love Duke Moneyline here. This is one of my biggest plays this week. I cannot wait for them to route Houston. Duke yeah, is I still mean, Duke. If they, they have the best freshman in the country, Jeremy McCann, if he plays like the, what he did last week and drains eight threes, six of them being in the first Biggest half, NIO bag in college basketball. Yeah. Dang. I mean, if he does that, there's no way they don't beat this Houston team. Um, this is a tough game. I think Houston's better than people think. I think they got rid of that one scare. Every one seed has that scare they're going to have in the tournament. Doesn't You never know what's going to be the first round, third round, whatever it is, to get all the way. They had the scare out of the way. They looked that game composed. Was crazy. They looked composed with their backups in for almost an entire overtime period. Yeah, so, four of their starters fouled out. So I'm saying, yeah. so like, I just think that like, they're a very good team. I this is a, I'm not. I hate this game. I think Houston wins, but the spread's too big. I just think it's going to be close. Such a good game. I'm going to go Houston here, but I think Duke covers. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. Houston, but I mean the over's a million. Bet a trillion on this over. They're yeah, score it's a low number. Very yeah, low. 133 a million? is really low. Bet a million or a billion? A million. A million? I just a million. A million from I a might do a billion. I mean, either way, it's a trillion. Right. A trillion. Yeah. Tate? Um, I couldn't disagree more with everyone here. I'd, I <laughs> absolutely <laughs> love Houston in this game. <clears throat> wow. Um, also, historically, no, one seed's very much struggle in the elite eight not the sweet 16 they it, i mean so this is just not the spot in the sweet 16 here <laughs> against duke we've seen filipowski and uh like jeremy roach we've seen those guys be very shaky during the year they haven't they haven't been anything super great but duke is just winning i mean they're a good basketball program they always have been and they have continued in this tournament to be okay all right but they're a four seed there's a reason why houston's the number one seed jamal shed played every single second of that game last game and contributed insanely until he fouled out that guy is a dog he's built different there's a reason why they built finished as the number one team in the country this year in ap poll rankings this was uh, this houston team is legit and four i mean four and a half like ryan said they, it, they could stay tight or whatever i don't i actually don't see a way houston loses this game um so i mean easily i'm gonna go houston minus the four and a half um the over under is I don't have a pick on the over-under. I think it's a little scary anyway. I think it could go way over, and it could just kind of sneak under. So, love, love Houston in the... Yeah. Standing by yourself over there. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. All right. I picked Houston my Last game on the card, Tennessee, Creighton. The two and the three. Oh, they explode. Pretty good game. This has to be a Ryan versus Tate yeah. battle. An all-time matchup. <coughs> oh, right yeah. There, right? All-time. Because oh, yeah. we already know the all picks. Time. We yes. already know the picks. Yeah. I mean, Ryan's team, this tournament's Tennessee. Tennessee Tate's yep. team, this tournament's Creighton. I mean, like... One of you guys take the wheel here. I mean, well, this is a battle between you guys. Oh. How are you feeling, Tate, with Creighton? Okay, so here's the thing about Creighton. Could suck out. That's the thing about Creighton. <laughs> Ooh. They didn't deserve to be there. Oh my th- Ooh. I mean, they barely, barely sucked out in overtime because two people in Oregon fouled out. No, but why, don't give me. Why, why are we talking trash about my team? It's his team. Yeah, it's his, it's team. his team. He went to Creighton. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big Creighton guy. <laughs> big Creighton guy. Okay, so if you go back and look at the clip of me talking about Creighton, I said these exa- like almost the exact words. Creighton is the perfect Sweet 16 team. Oh, they're Flashback. Lose. They will oh. lose easily. Oh, Tennessee oh, will oh, kill them. It. They're too much. <laughs> Tennessee is too much. They're a better team. That's Creighton sharp. is the six, Sweet 16 team. I hate that. They That's are sharp. the Sweet 16 team. That's I know. Sharp. I hate I, that. I know. It's too, it's too bad. I'm sorry. But Tennessee is too much. Ugh. Oh, my God. I'm really going to... I mean, Creighton doesn't even deserve to be here. Oregon was the pick last week, and yeah. they just got very unfortunate with foul trouble, and they choked that game. They were literally up by six with 40 seconds left. And turn the ball over twice. To be so, fair, uh, I mean, their problem was the same problem they've always had, which is that they just don't have depth, right? Oregon? Yeah. They were up by six with 40 seconds left yeah. and turned the ball over twice with their full team. Yeah. I mean, that's then what I'm saying. Then they overtime, they lost their players. But that's what I'm eight. saying is they don't have anyone to replace their players because they don't have depth. But right? that shouldn't Isn't even have right? happened yeah. if they oh, just won the game up by six mm. with 40 seconds left. All right, but sorry, regardless, sorry. however you want to flip it, turn it, and Michael interrupt me. Sorry, um, sorry, sorry. <laughs> all you know, once again, after watching last game, Tennessee versus... Texas, there was no universe that Tennessee should have won that game. I'm telling you, zero, they, at one point in time, they were one for 22 from three. Yep. 
And they, and yep. they were not even just... They were pretty controlled in that game until the last two minutes, and they still won. I think they won by, like, six or... Yeah, they so, looked something. awful. They, I mean, they looked awful. Kinnett right. was 0 for 7 to start. His his first made basket was free throws and with, like, 10 minutes left in the game. Or whatever it was, it was terrible. Yeah. The team looked awful. Like, it was the game that they have to lose, and they somehow come out with a win. I really don't see that happening again. I, no one's seen it all year. Every game, Even games they've lost, it's all been close in the SEC, and I just think that this is going to be... A murder. I just don't think Crane's as good as they are. And Kinnett, I could be wrong about him, but this is the game where he bounces back. I mean, he's still finished with probably like 18 or 20 points on the worst game of his life. He's going to go crazy at 30, and I mean, should be a murder. Yeah, uh, I couldn't agree with you more. I, that Tennessee game, I watched, you You had me watching quite a bit of Tennessee basketball towards the end of the regular season, the tur- like their conference mm-hmm. tournament, and then the beginning. I've never seen them start like that, ever. And like, you're right, every team... When you're talking about Houston, you said that was the game. Like, there's always a good team has a game where they're just bad. You got to win it. Like, just somehow, strictly somehow. bad, and they just have to find a way to win. And Houston win. wasn't able to do that when they had their bad game. Tennessee was able to do that. So, it makes me very bullish on Tennessee. Um, I think they bounce back big here. I'm not, I didn't see anything from Creighton the first couple weeks or the first two rounds to make me. They had the perfect sweet 16. Like, to make me any it's bit convinced. Sick. Yeah, I mean, they played. What they play? A 14 seed and 11 seed? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's yeah, the sickest thing ever. On the show. I mean, that's literally like, no they're the I feel like that's perfect like, sweet 16. That's like saying UConn's perfect. perfect sweet 16 team. Like, it's like they played uh, nobody. Yeah. Like, they played two double digit seeds. Like, it's not, yeah. it's not like we're picking the biggest upsets in the world here. <clears> but, um, no, Tennessee easy. Tennessee easy here. I'm bummed you're not riding Creighton. Yeah, I know. I want you on Creighton. No, I'm a little, I'm a little bummed. I want you on that side. I like how you yeah. said it, though. You didn't just say Creighton's my favorite team. There, You said the Sweet 16. That's no, you, you that was your, you I like you that was your pre-tournament that's call. sharp. Yeah, no, that was good. Don't Mike? don't don't forget. Tennessee is our pick to win the oh, national I, championship. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not picking. Nope, are we all riding? Uh, yes, we are one set closer to a consensus. Uh... Wait, what? We need more information. Oh, no, yeah, absolutely. Stat. So my my logic here is actually similar to the previous game, the Houston versus Duke game. Yeah. And uh, the reason for that is because Tennessee is just a more well-rounded team. I mean, they have a great offense and defense. Or I mean, they're just solid. Creighton is gang here, A, because they have a kind of an easy way into the, into the situation, but because their offense is scoring 80-plus points a game, but that's about all they have. Like, they allow a lot of points from their uh, defense or off their defense. And so, yeah, easy. I'm going to ride with Ryan and everyone else here. Apparently, uh, Tennessee minus two and a half and a sprinkle on the over of over 44 and a half. And Thank Mario, we're, we're making this a consensus, right? Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, my gosh, bro. You Here, pick, here's the thing. You yeah. picked it already. <clears throat> here's the thing. We have right? Tennessee to win. We have Tennessee to win. And Which you picked? Tennessee versus Creighton, this exact game, right? Mm-hmm. I've simmed it out. I've, I've grabbed it, flipped it, rubbed it down, right? Well, okay. Yeah. If you if you sim it out, hold on. If you sim it out, ten times. Sims three or Sims four? Sims five. Not even Whoa. out yet. Uh, I got the advantage. Futuristic. Out. Yeah. Ten games, fifty games, a hundred games, whatever you like. Tennessee wins this game, nine out of ten times. <laughs> so uh, okay. Oh God. But nine, there's one game. Win rate. There's one outcome. There's, there's one outcome <laughs> where Creighton wins this, right? And it's they go crazy hot from three. And Tennessee Can't just starts up. out shaky, like they've been doing. And they get, you know, down 20 points, down 16 points, something like that, and they just never recover because Creighton, they're not as good as Tennessee, but if you give them a 16-point lead, all of a sudden they can hold on to that and just chip away two halves of basketball. They'll hold on. They'll, be They'll win by, you know, three, four points. And that's wow. what's going to happen this weekend, boys. Uh, so no, I'm sorry. No. The one in ten wow. chance. The one in ten chance. Never tell you the odds. Because, you know, I – I may I may know a guy who who writes the scripts, you know, and I, I got I got the script leaked. I'm sorry. So yeah, you uh, should Creighton, have given us a script before we picked our bracket because our picks were. <coughs> my, my guy was yeah. uh he was on back order. I just okay. got it in, in the That's mail. Fair. That's, That's fair. fair. Yeah, got a got a shaky USPS dealer, but um, right. yeah, Creighton's yeah. going hot from US three. Postal it's gonna be it's gonna be a Creighton ten percent chance. Creighton outright win, unfortunately. Wow. Never tell him the odds. Wow. Well, there you have it. We went through all the games. Now it's time for the Mortal Lock Parlay. Oh, We're going to yeah. be paying you some money on our best bets. Like I said, started 3-0 last week. Let's make it 5-0 this week. Bang. Mortal Lock Parlay. Bang. Hey, if you like free money, I need you to listen up right here. The Subscriber Picks Parlay is a free roll we give to every subscriber, allowing anyone the chance to win up to $1,200 each week. We put our own money at risk every single week on our five best bets, what we call mortal locks. And if our parlay hits, 
We'll be raffling off all of our winnings to one lucky subscriber who supports our amazing show. Like the videos, comment on the videos, click that subscribe button below. We've already paid out $350 in our Mortal Lock Parlay winnings, and you're gonna be next. Mortal Lock time. Like Woo! I said, last week on fire to start. Me and Ryan kind of fumbled the bag towards the end, towards the finish line there. But I want to go off in the same order that we got hot with last week. Yeah. Mike hit Duquesne last week. Duquesne! Shout so you're Duquesne. on fire. You covered that by a oh, bunch yeah. of points. Tell me what your mortal is this week. Well, similar to last week, how I picked an underdog Duquesne at plus nine and a half. I'm going again with an underdog. And as our only consensus pick, Illinois Woo! plus one oh, and a half. Yes. There it is. Bing! <laughs> Bang! Like boom! He picks Starting off hot, we're going to keep it going. He picks Duquesne and then picks the team that beat Duquesne. That's, that's, yeah, that's sharp. He loves that side of bracket. He just Bing loves, loves that side of bracket. Bing, yeah. move. Mario. As I mentioned earlier, I couldn't talk about this uh, Purdue-Gonzaga game. Oh, that's true. I have this game on an absolute dead read. Mm. Listen. Gonzaga, yeah, they're, they're good. <clears throat> all right? But, I mean... I don't know. Something just seems a little bit off with this team. Like, yeah, they're good, obviously. I'm not taking anything away. Purdue is playing on a whole different level. Uh, like Ryan said, Zach Eady looks just unstoppable in the paint. I mean, he's just – he reminds me of Wemby in the NBA. I mean, dude's just – like, he's just kind of a hack. Been, like, yeah, he's not. either going to get fouled or score. Yeah. Um, you just have to pray he's, like, missing shots that game. Um, but then I started looking at this line, and I was like, Purdue's been unbelievable. And they're only five and a half point favorites. Mm. And Vegas last week just got absolutely cooked. They mm. said it was one of the worst weeks they've ever had. There's no way they come out and just set this line like they don't know what they're doing. They know this is going to be a close game. Gonzaga, listen, wow. not not as talented as Purdue. No Nowhere near as talented. Not even close. No, it's not even close. But something about just this program the past like five, six, seven years. Just failures. Go they, Zags. But, but they know <laughs> they know how to make deep runs in the tournament. Purdue, I mean, last year lost to 16th seed. I don't know. They just they just give me the vibe of that team that has all the expectation and pressure to win, and they just kind of fall short every time. Mm. And I feel like this is a spot where Gonzaga makes it a really, really close game. Gonzaga might even outright win, but nonetheless – my mortal is going to be Gonzaga plus five and a half. Wow. wow. There you have it. Wow. wow. Two underdogs, baby. Let's go. So two people that hit last week. We'll go to the last person that hit last week, Tate. Mr. McNader. What's um, your winner this week? Yeah, mine, I mean, you know, you thought Mario's was ugly. I mean, we're going we're gonna to have an ugly pick. Oh, oh yeah. We're getting dirty. It's, NIT tournament. It's not an underdog, but it's an under. Oh. And ooh. we're going to go with my favorite un my favorite over-under bet of the week is UConn SDSU under 135 and a half. Wow. wow. I mean, this line is just so unbelievably telling to how this game is going to go. I mean, everyone just thinks UConn scores a ton of points. They're going to win. SDSU scored a ton of points last week playing uh, Yale. I mean, yeah. these teams are coming off of great scoring days, and this line is at 135 and a half. If I think San Diego State can win this game, they're going to have to play great defense. I love San Diego State in this game. But not enough to make my mortal because I still think UConn can win. I think UConn can cover, but San Diego State is not ever going to give up in this revenge spot. I love the under of one thirty-five and a half. Ooh, all right, all right, there you have it, wow. Ryan. This is a bounce back spot for both me and you on mortals. Where are we riding here? Yeah, that was weird. Last week was a fluke. Won't happen again. I got you. Uh, Marquette minus six and a half for NC State. Yep. It's oh, a, oh. <laughs> yep. Wolf Pack. Wolf Pack. There's nothing Gotta really. Ride. There's nothing really to it here. Uh, Marquette's just a better team overall. NC State looked terrible last week. I know during the ACC they ran good, but like, didn't really matter. I don't. A lot of like Gonzaga lost the Big Ten. Tennessee didn't play well in the SEC. Bama didn't play well in the SEC. Like every single team that's top ranked didn't play well. Like North Carolina lost. Duke lost. Like it didn't make me happy or make me get excited at all. I don't think it was a big deal. I think Marquette rolls him. Tyler Kolek has another double-double, maybe even triple-double. Easy game. Marquette covers by a million. Roll yeah. Um, my favorite game of the week, my biggest spread bet, was the last game we talked about. Tennessee, Creighton. Uh, this line is way too small. Everyone saw what Tennessee did last week. I think they got a little spooked about it. Maybe they couldn't put together quite the games everyone thought they were. This is the game they get their shit together. I still think they make it out of that side of the bracket, go to the Final Four, go to the championship. So Tennessee minus two and a half <laughs> is my mortal lock. 90% so, chance of hitting. 90% chance of hitting. I'll take those. <laughs> I love those odds. So Never our mortal parlay, Tennessee, 
Marquette, mm -hmm. the under in the UConn game, Illinois, mm -hmm. Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Jesus. Those Dang. five bets hit. We are paying one person who likes. I mean, this is the most surgical. And subscribed. Oh yeah. One thousand dollars. <laughs> Wow. $1,000. Four okay. digits. One G. Four All you have to do, units. click that subscribe button. Bang. And Tate, as always, tell people what they have to do. Let them know. Tate, you, you, let got, know. If you guys have been here before, you know. You know. Especially when the Mortal Lock Parlay comes on, you better be like, you better comment, you better subscribe, share the channel with a friend so they can have a chance to enter and win with us Be a too. good friend. Turn that notification bell on because we're going to be posting ding. all week. It's March Madness Week. Sweet Madness. 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 Madness.